Hello and welcome to another episode of Ken Training where we want to give you the training that you need to tackle projects like this one on your own. I just got done patching and painting this wall that's directly behind me and you'll see the before shot and the after shot uh, which is right there um, and what and you might think to yourself you know I did a pretty good job if you're just looking at the wall okay and the, the so the wall may look uh, pretty good from this perspective but it doesn't pass my quality control inspection so I'm going to show you what my issue is and how I intend to fix it alright so here's the back wall and I'm looking at it from a side profile so you can tell that I'm standing on the side of the room and you see those shadow lines there those are the lines that are that's bothering me I don't want those shadow lines even though I tried my darndest to uh, get this to to lay out as flat as I could with no lap lines or anything like that so that is what I want to avoid I've been critiquing the whole wall and looking at the whole wall the only part that's uh, noticeable and it's only noticeable from certain angles is the top section right there so what I want to do in an effort to f solve this problem is I want to use this product right here which is called flow troll apparently made by flood and um, this product here is supposed to give me more open time with more open open time it's going to improve the flow and leveling of the product and this is what we are trying to um, trying to do so we're gonna set ourselves up right now I um, wanna give the top section here a light sanding so I've got my Marshallton sander right here and um, just with some 220 grit so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, give it a light sanding uh, on the wall okay we have our situation set up so that we can start getting our paint ready for the flow troll now this is not a brand new gallon so this particular gallon has um, about one-fourth left out of it there's four quarts to a gallon so there's about one quart of paint the flow troll takes and it tells you on the back four to eight ounces per uh, per quart for latex paint okay this cup that I'm holding right here is a 10 ounce cup so I put a mark in there at about the 8 ounce line I took the flow troll and I just shook it up so it's really well shooken and this is what it looks like when you put it in it's kinda of got like a milky color to it so this is how much it wants for one quart of paint so that is uh, how much I'm going to go ahead and pour into my one gallon, uh, excuse me, one, my one quart remaining in this one gallon bucket. So now I'm just going to go ahead and stir this up and then we will um, get to painting. So I'm going to stir this up really well. Now, when I did my painting job, I usually save my rollers so I don't have to go through brand new rollers each time but in this case here because I'm on the final coat and I want this job to come out perfect I'm gonna go ahead and use a brand new roller uh, pad so the pad that I'm using here is a 3 8 inch nap and it's a, so it's a 9 inch roller with a 3 8 inch nap and um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna de-shed this roller before I use it so let me show you what I mean in case you're not familiar with uh, de-shedding so to de-shed the roller I'm gonna take some tape in this case it's just some blue two inch tape take my roller and just go like this and I'm just trying to get those those little frizzly fuzzies that are on the roller pad on stuck onto the tape so when I'm ready to do the project the roller pad is as 
as crisp and clean as I can get it. So basically that's it. You just have to do it for like 30 seconds. So that roller pad is ready to go. This paint goes into the trash, I mean this tape goes into the trash and I'll mix this up and then we'll get to town. All right, I just did some cut in around this one here and I'm gonna go ahead and cut in around this one right here right now. I originally did not have an intention on doing this section, but I had so much paint left in the container I thought, well, I might as well go back and get it. Normally when you start on one side, you want to always continually cut into the wet edge as you're going along and, and not go back to it. While the paint is still is wet right now, I am just doing quality control, looking for lap lines, looking for anything that I need to touch. So. Um, Everything seems okay right now, and sometimes it can be hard to tell because it's it, I need it to dry out uh, in order to get the, a really good um, understanding about what this is uh, going to look like. Right here, I can see possibly one lap line, and hopefully that's where that's because that's where I cut in to start over here. Hopefully that's not going to come back to bite me. We'll let it dry out. And we'll see if this goes away and then goes invisible. Well, as the wall is drying, I can see that lap line, so hopefully, like I said, that's going to disappear. If I was to touch it now with the roller, I feel like I'd be over-rolling it and making it worse than what it is. Also, I can see kind of like some lines down here that when I was doing the rolling aren't, weren't evident but are evident now. Again, if I was to touch them, I feel like these lines would, I would make it worse, so i got to see if that settles out. One thing I forgot to do when I was um, getting myself situated, what I should have done, I got this tip from a fellow uh, YouTuber which I thought was a very good tip. What I should have done was I should have taken some Floetrol and put it here on the edge of the brush to keep this um, from the paint from adhering to this section. Now this particular brush is a few months old and uh, I keep my brushes in uh, very good condition. I've already cleaned this brush with, uh, with the water. Then what I do uh, when I'm done and I want to put the brush away is I take a paper towel and I wrap it like this. Show you here. Yeah? Like this here. So I kind of keep the, uh, the bristles kind of taunt. Then I take this jacket which is called the Keeper and I put the brush back into the keeper to uh, maintain its shape. So I'm always trying to keep my materials as, uh, as clean as possible so I get the maximum oops, I get the maximum life expectancy. Oh, you know what? This keeper just broke. <laughs> I've had this keeper for so long it actually just broke. Normally you would have the top here and you'd be able to close it up tight. So what I'll have to do is I'll just have to make do like this and get it as taut as I can and just leave it like that and let it dry out like that and try to get some more life out of that. But that's one way that you can extend your paintbrushes by using the Floetrol. 
Okay everybody, it's been a couple hours. I was doing a couple errands and this is your final product. And there is absolutely no shadowing. The wall is a complete slam dunk winner. Let me give you a different per angle over here so you can kind of see it different. Okay, if you remember I was here on the side and I was looking at the wall like this and I was kind of trying to move in different shadows of the, you know, the light fixtures and everything like that. And the wall is there's absolutely no lines. The Floetrol product is a is a complete slam dunk winner. It might be washing out on the uh, camera screen. Do you guys remember that right above this last one here? This was this is the one on the right. I I cut it. I started the wall here and I went that way. Then I then I decided to come back and finish this up. Now you tell me if you can see that line at all right above this here I mean it's there is no line okay <laughs> it's like perfect now looking at it from uh, different shadow angles even from like way way over here on the right hand side I, sorry for the camera going in and out of focus but uh, I can't it's just perfect okay here's the the wall from this side I mean the whole wall is perfect oh and by the way you guys know that I did not paint the entire wall I, I stopped somewhere around here and and using the Floetrol product did not change the color. Look at look at how it, it blended in with the non Floetrol product compared to the Floetrol product. There's no there's no um, color difference between the two sections. So I mean it is just it's just flawless, okay? So um, so for, uh, from my perspective when you are doing your painting projects you absolutely want to use this on the final coat, if not the second, uh, uh, it, it, all top coats uh, uh, should probably be done with this one. I mean, I, I don't see how it can hurt you. It's not that expensive. I think this was $8 for this container. Okay, that's going to wrap up this video. Please smash that like button down if you haven't done so already. This is the channel Ken Training where we try to give you tips and tricks with DIY talent, skill sets, and tools, but trying to receive professional grade results with, with, uh, with uh, DIY skills. So that's what we aim to do here on this channel. So please subscribe to my channel and uh, smash that like button down and I will catch you on the flip side.